Welcome everyone to the statewide Medicaid Managed Care Long-Term Care Program Webinar for Long-Term Care Potential Network Providers. This presentation is part of a series designed to teach you about the statewide Medicaid Managed Care Long-Term Care Program. In particular, today's presentation will teach you about assisted living facilities in the statewide Medicaid Managed Care Long-Term Care Program. To access today's presentation, please follow the link below to the SMMC website. That would be aca.myflorida.com forward slash SMMC. Next, please select event training materials to download today's presentation. You may also view details regarding future SMMC events using the upcoming events tab. Last, choose the files you would like to save. Another note. You may also view files from past events and ACA guidance statements or submit questions to be answered. Now that everyone has had a chance to download today's presentation, let me introduce you to today's presenters. We have Carol Schultz with the Agency for Healthcare Administration and Eunice Medina with the Department of Elder Affairs. Please send any questions to slmedicaidmanagedcare at aca.myflorida.com. Those presentations will be posted on the SMMC website once available. I will now hand you over to Eunice. Good afternoon. This presentation will cover the basics of the statewide Medicaid managed care long-term care program, recipient enrollment, how providers can join a long-term care managed care plans provider network, the impact on assisted living facilities and adult family care homes, and enrollee and provider protections during the transition to a long-term care program. Florida has a new long-term care program. The statewide Medicaid Managed Care Long-Term Care Program is a new delivery system for Medicaid enrollees to receive long-term care services. An individual may be eligible for the statewide Medicaid Managed Care Long-Term Care Program if he or she fits into one of the following categories. He or she is age 65 years or older and meets the nursing facility level of care, or an individual is age 18 years or older, is Medicaid eligible due to a disability, and meets nursing facility level of care. Please note that nursing facility level of care means that an individual meets Medicaid Institutional Care Program, or ICP, income and asset limits. The following Medicaid program participants will transition into the long-term care program. Nursing facility residents currently receiving Medicaid-funded long-term care services and participants enrolled in the Assisted Living Waiver, the Age and Disabled Adult Waiver, which includes the Consumer Directed Care Plus Program, the Channeling Waiver, the Frail Elder Option, and the Nursing Home Diversion Waiver. This slide summarizes the services that are covered by the long-term care program. However, please note that each recipient will not receive all services listed. Recipients will work with a case manager to determine the services they need based on their condition. It is important to note that current recipients of these programs will be enrolled in the long-term care program without any interruption of services. Managed care plans are responsible for ensuring that their enrollees receive the health and long-term care services they need. Managed care plans are also referred to as plans or long-term care plans who contract with long-term care providers to give enrollees access to high-quality long-term care services. This slide shows how the Agency for Healthcare Administration contracts with managed care plans, who in turn contract with service providers who provide services to managed care enrollees. Legislation passed in 2011 requires the following, that the statewide Medicaid managed care program be implemented statewide, that the state is divided into 11 regions that coincide with the existing Medicaid areas, and that each provider service network must be capable of providing all cover services to a mandatory Medicaid managed care enrollee or may limit the provision of services to a specific target population based on the age, chronic disease state, or medical condition of the enrollee to whom the network will provide services. This slide shows which long-term care plans are contracted to provide services in each region. The long-term care program allows two types of long-term care plans. First, health maintenance organizations, which are capitated, and secondly, provider service networks, which are fee-for-service for up to two years and then will be capitated. All services are authorized by the health maintenance organizations or the provider service network. 
Enrollees should not see a difference in services, whether they are enrolled in a health maintenance organization or a provider service network. The main difference for network providers will be how they are paid. Under capitated plans, network providers will be paid directly by the health maintenance organization. Under the fee-for-service plan, providers will be paid by the Medicaid fiscal agent after claims are submitted to the plan. The next few slides will answer how recipients can enroll and receive services. Recipients can enroll by utilizing a service offered by the Agency for Healthcare Administration known as Choice Counseling. Choice Counseling is an unbiased and objective service offered by the Agency for Healthcare Administration, which, through a contract and enrollment broker, is available to assist recipients in understanding the following. Managed care, available plan choices and plan differences, and the enrollment and plan change process. Choice Counseling materials are mailed to recipients two months prior to the start date of services in their region. This slide gives us an overview of approximately how many eligible people will be affected by the long-term care program. The enrollment effective dates for regions begins with August 1, 2013 for Region 7 and ends on March 1, 2014 for Regions 1, 3, and 4. This slide shows the counties located within each region and it lists estimated eligible populations for each of those regions. Once recipients are enrolled in a long-term care plan in their region, they will be able to receive services from that plan's network of long-term care providers. Now I will now turn the presentation over to Carol Schultz. Thank you, Eunice. I really appreciate it. Um, we want to talk now on how to become part of a long-term care plan provider network. When should a provider contract with a long-term care plan? The provider can contract with a plan at any time. However, recipients will begin choosing their plans two months prior to the go-live date in their particular region. And choice counselors use a list of the contracted providers to help all of the recipients choose the plan that best fits their need. To be on the list, you must have an executed contract and the contract has to be verified by an automated system. You can ask the long-term care plan if your contract has been validated in the provider network verification system. And we'd like to strongly emphasize that there is a need for the assisted living facilities to contract now for all regions so that the recipients living in the facilities don't have to move if there's a contract in place. And we're asking, not, uh, we're asking the facilities not to wait until 60 days after the go live. Now we want to talk a little bit about enrollment versus registration. And the contract for a fee-for-service plan, or the PSN, a provider has to be actively enrolled already in Medicaid. However, to contract with a capitated long-term care plan, or HMO, the provider must be either actively enrolled in Medicaid or can be registered with a Medicaid ID number. Providers who contract with the provider service network have to be fully enrolled in Florida Medicaid. And providers that are already fully enrolled simply share their Medicaid ID with the provider service network plan. Providers who are not enrolled have to submit a Florida Medicaid provider uh, enrollment application. This slide shows you how to enroll in Medicaid. And the website is www.mymedicaid-florida.com and you would select public information for providers and then select enrollment. And the link to the enrollment wizard is in the middle of the web page. Again, the online enrollment wizard is found at the website that we discussed on the previous slide. The capitated long-term care plan providers uh, contract with a long-term care plan must again have a Florida Medicaid ID. And the plan will use this ID to submit and counter claims data. Providers already enrolled simply supply their Medicaid ID to the long-term care plan. How to register with Medicaid. Providers who do not have a Medicaid ID can obtain one through a simplified registration process. And please remember that registration is not the same as Medicaid enrollment. 
The long-term care plan will submit the registration for the provider through an automated mass registration tool or simplified registration form. The long-term care plan signs the form and sends it to Medicaid, and Medicaid then sends a welcome letter to the provider, and the letter contains the new, uh, the new Medicaid ID, and afterwards the long-term care plan to which the provider has that ID is now linked together. The managed care treaty provider registration form is available on the managed care page of the public web portal, again at www mymedicaid-florida.com. This registration form cannot be used to apply for fee-for-service providers. This slide, again, shows how to obtain the registration form. It gives you the website, and then you would go to Provider Enrollment, and from there, Enrollment Forms, and then you would click on Managed Care Treating Provider, and then click on Manage Care Treaty Provider Registration Form. This slide shows you the form for the provider registration. All Florida Medicaid handbooks, fee schedules, forms, provider notices, and other important Medicaid information are available on the Medicaid Fiscal Agents web portal. And the Florida Medicaid's web portal solution provides communication, data exchange, and tools to the provider community. And the web portal consists of both public and secure areas. And for the secure area, this would require a username and a password. And the public area contains general information, such as program awareness, forms, notices. Already registered. If the assistant living facility or the adult family care home is already registered with Medicaid and if the ALF or the AFCH needs to share the Medicaid ID with a different long-term care plan than the one that submitted the managed care treating provider registration form, then the facility can directly contact the new long-term care plan and share their Medicaid ID. Long-term care program impacts on assisted living facilities, and adult family care homes. ALFs are eligible to provide assisted living services. The ALF bills the long-term care plans for service payments based on terms of contract with the plan. Long-term care plans must offer a contract to any ALF that was billing for Medicaid waiver services as of July 2012. Now, after the first year of the contract, the long-term care plans can exclude ALS for not meeting quality or performance standards. It's also important to note here that the assistive care services program is now being rolled into the assisted living services for the ALS. Adult family care homes are eligible to provide the assistive care services program, and they will build the long-term care plans for service payments again, based on terms of the contract with the long-term care plan. Now we need to discuss the home-like environment. All ALS and AFCHs that are going to participate in the long-term care program have to demonstrate that they meet certain home-like characteristics in order to be able to contract with a plan. These characteristics are sometimes known as home and community-based characteristics and the plans have to include this language in their contracts with the ALS and the AFCHs. And the long-term care plans are responsible for reviewing the facilities to ensure they have met these home-like environmental characteristics. Now, what is a home-like environment? Each enrollee is guaranteed the right to receive home and community-based services in a home-like environment and participate in their community uh, regardless of his or her living arrangements. And some of the aspects of a home-like environment are entrance doors that have locks with appropriate staff having keys to the doors, the freedom for the individual to decorate their sleeping or personal living areas, the resident who has a choice of private or semi-private rooms, or a choice of a roommate for semi-private rooms, 
access to telephone service uh, as well as lengthy use and the freedom to have private conversations and private areas at any time. Also the freedom to control their daily schedule and activities, physical and mental conditions permitting, uh, having uh, visiting um, individuals uh, at a time of the resident's choosing, access to food and an area to prepare it at any time, physical and mental conditions permitting, uh, the ability to have a personal sleeping schedule, and the ability to participate in community activities and facility activities of the resident's choice, and to ensure the residents are allowed to participate in unscheduled activities of their choosing. The state will ensure the promotion of a home-like environment in an ALF or ASCH through on-site monitoring reviews by the state staff and the credentialing and recredentialing process by the long-term care plans in order to ensure program compliance. If the long-term care plan finds the facility not maintaining home and community-based characteristics, they have to report the finding to the state contract manager immediately and a remediation must be proposed within three business days. There's more information on the home-like environment and questions and answers under the event and training materials tab at the website http colon backslash backslash ahca dot myflorida dot com backslash smmc. Who determines if the recipient can continue to live in an ALF? As long as the facility meets the resident's needs and the facility is in the long-term care plans network, the resident may stay there. The long-term care case manager conducts a comprehensive assessment that includes the resident and participation by any other individuals chosen by the resident to ensure that the care plan provides for all necessary services, including the resident's personal goals. And ultimately, the ALF administrator is responsible for determining whether or not the facility can meet the resident's needs. And if it is found the facility cannot meet the needs, the administrator should contact the long-term care plan. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the care plan. The person-centered care plan is developed by the resident with the help of the long-term care plan's case manager. And the care plan is based on a comprehensive assessment that again includes the resident and participation by any other individual chosen by the resident. Now the ALF is responsible for completing the resident health assessment for assisted living facilities, which is ACA form 1823, and this should include all the services in the resident's person-centered care plan. Uh, it's very important that the plan of care include personal preferences, goals, and choices for the resident to achieve personal outcomes as well as services. Who determines level of care? The Department of Elder Affairs Comprehensive Assessment and Review for Long-Term Care Services or CARE staff will continue to establish the level of care for adult Medicaid enrollees. And this process is not going to change in the new program. CARES performs assessments to identify long-term care needs, establish a level of care, and recommend the least restrictive and the most appropriate placement for the resident. We're going to discuss now ALS rights. The long-term care plan must ensure that there's provider relations and communication. Uh, there's an authorization process, including denials and appeals timely claims payment and assistance with claims processing and complaint resolution process. The resident's rights, recipients that are enrolled in the long-term care program and residing in an ALF or AFCH have the same rights currently in law, which includes the resident's bill of rights, which can be found in Chapter 429, Florida Statutes. The recipient also has the right to choose any ALF or AFCH in the long-term care plans network. Enrollee grievances. 
the long-term care plan must notify their enrollees of how to pursue a complaint, a grievance, an appeal, or a Medicaid fair hearing, and how to report abuse, neglect, and exploitation. All Medicaid enrollees are entitled to file for a fair hearing through the Florida Department of Children and Families. And this is an administrative hearing that reviews an action taken by a plan that limits, denies, or stops a requested service. Protections for enrollees and providers during transition to long-term care program. Long-term care plans must continue the enrollee's current services for up to 60 days unto an, until a new assessment or a care plan is complete and the services are in place. And long-term care plans have to complete a care plan within five days of enrollment for new enrollees in an assisted living facility or adult family care home. Providers must continue to provide services until the provider receives instructions from the long-term care plan. This is a very important point. Continuity of care. Until a new care plan is implemented, the long-term care plans have to pay for service delivery from an enrollee's current provider, even if the provider does not have a contract with the long-term care plan. And during the transition period, the long-term care plan must pay the network providers the, great, the rate agreed to in their executed subcontracts and must pay non-network providers the rate they are currently being paid. Long-term care plans may require the providers to submit documentation of the current pay rate, certain things like a valid referral agreement, a subcontract, or perhaps paid claims. Again, a very important point in continuity of care. Providers should continue to provide services to eligible recipients until they receive instructions from the long-term care plan. Also, providers have to continue to check the recipient eligibility prior to rendering services as is, as is required now. Current long-term care providers are required to cooperate and communicate with incoming long-term care plans during this transition process. And this includes providing information about an enrollee's care plan and continuing to provide services to the enrollee until the plan notifies you to stop up to 60 days. There are no requirements for the long-term care plans to give a certain amount of notice to stop providing services, and the notice may be as little as one day. How will providers get paid? If you have a contract with a plan, you'll be paid as specified in your contract. If you do not have a contract with a long-term care plan, you'll be paid the rate you're currently receiving, so be prepared to document your current rate, and you do not have to have a letter of agreement with a long-term care plan. Long-term care plans must pay a clean claim electronically within 20 days or by paper within 40 days. And the long-term care plan must have a process for handling and addressing the resolution of provider complaints if there are any issues concerning their claims. If a provider has trouble getting paid, please call the local Medicaid area offices. All of the contact numbers are available at this website on the slide. The agency will ensure you're paid appropriately and timely for services rendered according to the current care plan. Summary and additional information. As you prepare to participate in the long-term care program, please consider the following. Providers must be enrolled or registered in Medicaid to be eligible for the program. In an ALF, the assistive care services are now rolled into the assisted living services. Adult family care homes are eligible to provide assistive care services. And both ALFs and adult family care homes must meet the home-like environment standards. CARES will continue to determine clinical eligibility. 
a recipient continues to have the same fair hearing rights and long-term care plans have to ensure that enrollees are notified of how to pursue a complaint, a grievance, appeal, and how to report abuse, neglect, and exploitation. Capitated long-term plan network providers will be paid by the plan, and providers enrolled in a fee-for-service plan will be paid by Medicaid after claims are submitted to the long-term care plan. Until the long-term care plan has a new care plan in place, it must provide the same services, the same providers, the same amount of services, and the same rate of pay if the provider is not under contract. Additional information on the statewide Medicaid managed care program is available at the website on the slide. And you would go to news and events tab for upcoming webinars and events. And you may also sign up to receive program updates um, by clicking the red Sign Up for Program Updates box on the right side of the page. And for information on the recipient enrollment process and expanded benefits of each long-term care plan, please go to the website noted. And also, finally, questions can be emailed to the website on the slide. Additional information is also available on youtube.com backslash AHCA Florida, on facebook.com backslash AHCA Florida, twitter.com backslash AHCA underscore Florida. Thank you guys very much for participating in today's webinar. Have a wonderful day.